lot of cocktails. But cocktails are also a lot more expensive than beer, by the way. Hey, I'm Obi That Day, and we are drinking from the Garden Hose, your favorite podcast about nothing. Guess wherever you get your podcast, be it Apple, Google, Spotify, or any of the other small podcast areas out there. We're there. We're on YouTube also, and of course, our web site, gardenhose.vercel. Ed, how are you? Obi, I am doing well. Uh, just got back from vacation, which filled me with a few rants, uh, which we'll get to. Um, but I, I got to start with some feedback on the last episode that really caught my eye. Uh, may have caught yours as well. So we stumbled upon something uh, last episode uh, with your, your boss slash friend called us the Seinfeld of podcast. And we didn't really know where that was going to go. But we put up the poll on the website and 56% of people actually said that's a great comparison, um, which shocked me. Because I actually thought, and I actually voted for this one, uh, but only 22% of the what people went with, haha, you aren't even the Facts of Life podcast. So I was shocked, Obi. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you take the good, you take the bad, and then you got a podcast about nothing. Um, I was excited about the poll. Uh, I thought it was, I, I was shocked by the results myself. Uh I I did vote uh, with the where does Obi work the quality <laughs> of management there I I thought that was a a, a good funny answer so uh, yeah fifty six percent and it wasn't us who went there so it looks like that's definitely our new tagline I can't believe it I I am a little surprised that that we have fans but yeah so yeah Obi and that's a great point we did not vote for that answer. So we did not pad the poll. If anything, we made it look worse. So really, of our fans, it's higher than 56%. Yes. Yes. So, so, so that was so that was something. And then let's go a little bit further in, into the comments. Um, uh, because I thought this comment was particularly interesting uh, and not insightful at all into our process. Because... This person figures, oh, it's a Seinfeld. They have a creative process that goes like this. I decided that I ate wooden spoons, wooden utensils today. And so you then say, oh, that's a show. Let's do a show about that. And then at some point later, we actually record that show. But what this gentleman, Russell Darwinple, gets completely wrong is it's actually even less than that. I tell Obi when we get on air that I had wooden utensils. So we're having a show no matter what. We are literally going to have a show about nothing if we show up here with nothing to talk about. So I just want Russell Darwinple uh, to know that as well. So I will throw out there for Russell's edification that every now and again, and it's not most shows, one of us will say, I got a topic, or here's a list of some things that came up this week. Maybe we could talk about them. Uh, but for the most part, no, it is really just Ed comes on here and says something that bothered him. And hopefully I have questions about it. Like, what's wrong with a wooden spoon? But Ed, I, I, I do have, uh, I have a fan that's out there that I'm after. I want, I want to expose them. Uh, and not in a bad way. I want to know who Replicant is. Replicant, I am so happy to have you. But Replicant has not come forward in my personal life. Have they come forward in your personal life? Because they are commenting every week. No, don't know who the replicant is. Um, uh, one day they will reveal themselves, I am sure. But uh, no, the replicant continues to give some witty comments. And so if you're not the replicant, uh, why aren't you giving witty comments as well on our website? And if you are the replicant, keep it up and one day reveal yourself. And you may even get a guest spot on this podcast because we've been told that we should have a guest spot. But, you know, that would be one of those things where we start the podcast and call somebody up and see if they're free, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, like, hey, you know what? I figured out who Replicant is. Did it, did it, did it. I hope they have to. That, that would be how that would that would go. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But but we did plan somewhat for this show. I mean, Obi sent me a list today of things he wanted to talk about. And before we started recording today, we kind of went over the list. So this might be the most prepared we are in years. 
uh, since I brought you the list of music from like the uh, 90s or the, that might be better, like that was that episode. It's the last one we prepared for. So, um, and I'm going to start with uh, this new club I'm part of. And it, it's, uh, it's a little iffy. It's a little strange. It's kind of a new club. It's the uh, My Kids Are All Grown Club. And so my oldest is graduating. He's starting to have a job. Uh, I would uh, say that for those who are interested, uh, when the conversation comes up, he is a production assistant uh, on Broadway. And, but that's about all I know. And then people like, like and I say my kid's growing, he's a production assistant on Broadway. And the conversation almost instantly died. Like if I said, hey, my kid's a junior in high school preparing for the SATs, everybody's got a story about the kid preparing for the SATs or questions about what it's like for your kid's. Once they get a job, it's dead. And then my second child, Alex, uh, he's going to college, but he's going the um, community college route. And so people aren't interested in that either. I am in the people don't care about your kids because they are adults club. It is crazy. I bring up my kids' conversations. Stop. Dead. So Obi, as you're talking about that, two things jump to mind. The first one is, are you really in a club or are you just a loner? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, it just screams to the fact that the human experience is about relatability. If you can relate to another human, you can hang out with them and you can talk to them. If you cannot relate to them, there's nothing to talk about. So if my kid was also a production assistant on Broadway, we would be relatable to each other. We would talk. But that's the problem. When your kids start getting jobs, there's so many different options out there. It, there's a higher chance you're not going to be relatable to somebody else. And it, you're 100% right, because um, I know it's a club because I ran into somebody who was in that club and they told me about their kid. And I was like, aha, I got nothing. So, so I this- knew instantly when it happened. Like I experienced it the night before with one group of people. This is this is all during Employee Appreciation Week last last week. So lots of different people I've worked with in the past over the last twenty years. And then I ran into somebody else who was in the club, and that's when I immediately said, "Ed, I'm in the club," because the conversation. Oh, what's your uh, my kid? Oh, your kids so are growing. The, so too. the so the club is just two people looking at you, going, "We have nothing to talk about. See you later. I gotta go get a drink." Uh well we found other topics but the the kid the kid conversation grinded things to a halt and you had to you had to be creative to get out of that that conversation and it'll stop because what's interesting it. is what I found is uh it, even on my recent vacation uh I'm there I went to Disney World so as you can imagine lots of kids lots of young kids and I find myself because part of the human experience is relatability. I find myself being the old guy on the elevator with the young guy and the two young girls going, ah, I remember those days. Just wait until they get to high school. You know, like, you know, yes. the guy who gives unsolicited advice. I'm that guy now. Uh, and I'm not surprised, Great, right? Because you're hundred percent right. So you can keep that conversation going by looking back. Yeah. But you're right. When people look, they're like, eh, so you're an empty nephew now. Congrats. If you talk about being an empty nester, I think there's some conversation to be had. A, but yeah. and you're right. Unless your kid is a PA on Broadway, you don't know, I don't know what that is. Like I just tell people that I don't know. What he, I would like if you could, because I don't know what he does. I think he gets people coffee and gets paid ridiculously good to do it. If I'm being honest, I I thought where you're going to go with the club is that you have a son who has a job and you have no idea what he does. And there's everybody else who has an adult son or daughter that has a job, has no idea what they do. That's part of it. I think that, I mean, there's truth to that. But yeah, I mean, because I, I, I can't speak for your parents, but I can speak for mine and tell you that they have no idea what I do, my brother does, or what my wife does. They do. We all understand what my sister-in-law does because she's a professor at a college. But otherwise, it's, uh, I don't know what that person does. So, Obi, I think you're in also this unique part of your club members are in the unique phase on social media because you are now transitioning from bragging about your kids on Facebook 
to actually not posting on Facebook because there's nothing to brag about. And then you have to wait, apparently, from what I see, is wait until you have grandkids. And then you can start bragging about the grandkids. You, you, I think you're right. But you do bring up a, another subject here, Facebook, because this is my annual proms and graduation rant. Like, stop, all of you. Stop. 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 I love you. I love your family, but it's a sixth grade graduation. I stop. I know you're you're marking off an important event in your child's life, and I'm happy that your child is growing and moving forward in the process. But it's a sixth grade graduation. So Obi, uh, and we went over this before, and I get your rant, and I've told you the reason I would post my sixth grade graduation photo, not my photo, but my kids' photo, is because this is how instead of actually talking to my family, I can just post a picture on Facebook and they can see it. And we still seem like we're a close family. Um, so is your rant that you don't want to see it? Or do you feel like the tipping conversation we had that you feel obligated to like it and you just don't want to like it? I feel like um, I'm probably in the wrong here. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Replicant's probably going to pick up on that. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, I, I, I don't want to see it. Now, I get where you're coming from. But there's also, at this point, like, a family chat. You send it out in the family chat on your phone. There's 17 different chat uh, tools. Send it out on the chat on Facebook. Start a family group where everybody can share their children growing up. It's like... The, the problem is that there's a certain sense of any time someone posts something on Facebook, are you bragging or are you just telling me what's going on? And if you're bragging about your sixth, your kid's sixth grade graduation, is that really something to brag about? Like, okay, you raised your kid to 12 years old. Good job. And, and so that's what it is. It feels like maybe you're, you're, you're posting an utter bliss so that you're, mother-in-law who you don't want to talk to yeah. knows i think it's perfectly acceptable i think you look at social media and you're probably you're probably right i'm probably wrong on this i'm not as skeptical as i should be you feel as though if somebody posts on social media they're bragging i feel as though they're just informing so you know i was at disney i posted a photo in front of me on tron i was actually not bragging that i was standing in front of tron i was just showing people i was standing in front of tron and oh by the way i just rode the ride ass <laughs> Oh, also, social media, I, I've got something to tell you. Uh, today, I had a, a new friend suggested to me on social media. Your baby uh, what, girl. Was it a what? Your, ba your baby girl is now on Facebook. She finally, I know, she finally learned how to get on there. I thought you were going to tell me that this girl, I got to find her, Tina Marie, or what's her name? Tina Lynn. I thought Tina Lynn sent you a friend request because Tina Lynn... She sent me a friend request yesterday, and um, I have no idea who this woman is. <laughs> I think she must have got me mixed up with somebody else. But um, she, she got you mixed up with somebody who has an S at the end of their name. I, I'll sure. tell you right now, though, but she's got a profile picture, and she's wearing a sweatshirt that says, My anxiety is chronic, but this ass is iconic. She didn't, get, she didn't get you confused with anybody else. She's trying to get as many followers as possible with that shirt. I'll tell well, you that. She's been on Facebook three days and she's got six friends. So I don't think she's doing a good job at it. Okay. Okay. Yes. So yes, my baby girl is on Facebook because she was sick and tired of the conversation around the family going, well, you didn't see that. It was on Facebook <laughs> that, because that's how my family talks. I I had the feeling that that was, I brought that up because that's what I was like, this is going to lead back to she went on to catch all the family drama that's on Facebook because uh, you and your brother uh, do post a lot of family pictures of what we're here. We're there. We're doing this. And dad, something dad had a nice little event happen. Everybody was posting about dad's event. So, yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. She's like, I want in. I want in. I'm going on Facebook. I want in. Yeah, exactly. That she, she, she was just missing out. So that's why, that's why she was posting. So you mentioned you were at Disney and yeah. you saw some kids. 
Uh, lots of kids. Lots and, of kids. You see any any kids doing crazy kid things at Disney? Because you're at that age, you're looking up. Oh, yeah, that 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 stupid kid behavior. Any, any good any good stories there? So I, you're setting me up here. I can tell. And and since you sent me a list earlier today, I'm going to take the bait. So. Uh, yeah, I saw lots of stupid kid things, right? Don't get me wrong. Like I saw the kid who was hanging out at the bottom of the pool slide and the, and wouldn't leave the bottom of the pool slide. And the lifeguard was yelling at the kid, blowing the whistle. And by, mind you, this kid was like four years old. No parents in sight. And then the lifeguard had to shut the water slide off to get the kid to go away. Meanwhile, it takes apparently 15 minutes for the water slide to start again. So screwed all these people. So yeah, that was one thing. So you see bad parenting, but there's this other social media. Let's take the last two topics, social media and, um, and Disney. There's this, I don't know if it's a trend, but there was a famous meme uh, out there of a woman, young woman who took a picture in front of the animal kingdom sign. And she was standing in front of the sign and, you know, I don't know if her boyfriend or someone was taking the picture and her head was in over the letters, how do I get this? And I am an animal, right? And then kingdom, right? So think about it. Animal, but I am is covered up with a head. So you just see the A and the N, her head, and A-L, and then kingdom. So you can figure out what that spells, right? So a lot of people had fun with that on, on social media. So the funniest thing, when I was leave, when we walked into Animal Kingdom, of course, I made a crack to my family about, hey, this is where that picture was taken. That was the end of it. Walked in. Then uh, leaving, we see these two like 12 year old boys lining up their friends. So their friend has his back to the Animal Kingdom sign. And you see them giggling, going, no, 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 more to the right. <laughs> no, no, look to the left. And then they were clearly lining him up for the A-N-A-L Kingdom photo. So I thought that was pretty funny that 12 year old boys do that type of crap. I'm waiting for for them to get like a series and some of them to hang cover up the DOM as well, or the king, either one, and just yeah. go with. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I saw that, but I saw some other things at Disney. So let's go back to last uh, episode. We talked a little bit about tattoos. Yes, we did. So based oh, on them, apparently, this entire country is tattooed in I places. You never thought people would put tattoos. Given the fact that I agree with your first statement, I I have not, other than the fact that, um, yeah, no, even, uh, you know, I've seen videos. I can't think of anywhere I've not seen a tattoo. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, in public, though, I'm just saying, like, people are wearing bikinis and bathing suits, and there's, like, tattoos everywhere. Everyone has a tattoo. It's crazy. The younger they are, the more tattoos they have. I, I, I think we've discussed this before. I am surprised that the evolution hasn't reversed at this point to be like, no, to catch back up to 50-year-old me because everybody younger than me. Like I said, you were one of the early adopters at our age, but everybody like who I feel is at least two or three years younger than me. And, mm. the, and the amount of people with neck tattoos and face tattoos at Disney, I, this, so this is the thing that perplexed me the most. How do you afford to go to Disney if you have a neck tattoo or a face tattoo? Uh, they live in Florida and they have the, the annual package, the family package. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I was perplexed by that. I also didn't have the balls to go ask them either, but I was perplexed by that. I also saw some people driving those scooters, the EVs. Yeah. No, I, not some people. I saw a, a ton of people doing that, but two interesting things. Two separate times on my trip, I was in the elevator when someone came onto my elevator in their EV and gunned it right into the back of the elevator. Like head on Ooh. collision into the back of the elevator while I was standing there. You want to talk about someone being embarrassed. I'm assuming they were embarrassed and someone who had to do everything in his power to say, Oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> And not laugh at them. So I saw uh, that. Okay, I'm going to tell you straight up. Now that I know that that happens twice in a week period, when it happens to me, as somebody who sees it happen, I am going to laugh. 
There's no, that's going to be like somebody, like, I don't know if we've covered this before. When I see somebody vomit, I think I my gut reaction is not to get sick, not to puke, but to laugh at you. Uh, that is, will be what happens with that, too. Obi, I think you might have trouble laughing at these people because they're old. You no. just feel bad for them. You're supposed to feel bad when somebody throws up. You feel, you feel, well, that's true, too. All right, you're just a despicable human being. All right, so you actually... Despicable human being is, is what my next topic is here. And it's not despicable. It's inconsiderate idiots. So again, when you travel, you run into inconsiderate idiots. So Obi, I might have talked about this before, but I got to talk about it again. What is it with people thinking that if they're sitting on the back of the plane, they can actually get up and get to the front of the plane before anybody gets up when you land? They're never successful. No one has been successful doing that in the history of man. Why do they try it? And and who are their parents? Um. Uh, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little bit of my explanation. My thought is that some of those people, some of those people, are super duper infrequent flyers, because like the first time you think you can beat track, you think you can do it, boom. You thought you could do it. Now you know better, so now you're not. But this goes back to a few weeks ago. Lines, lines. Everywhere there's lines, and people in the airport like to wait in line. So the person gets their stuff and waits at the back of the plane in the line. In the line. Listen, I try to get my stuff, and if I can, sit back down. I don't want to have to get my stuff when it's my turn. But if the situation doesn't afford it then i don't but yeah people people like to wait they go to an airport they think the job is waiting in the line maybe they're stupid and think about this too obi we're all going to the same place baggage claim so all the two, same place these two idiots that try to cut me off well wait this is crazy these two idiots not related try to run to the front right they get stuck as you would know it right at my row mm -hmm. now i take this personal because you can't get up and get your bags now because these idiots. No, are. I had no uh. bags. I just take idiocracy personally. We had two idiots here. I take it personal. The problem is the one idiot was slightly in front of my knees, right? I don't have leverage there. The other idiot was behind my knees. I got leverage there. So when it came time for the row in front of me, the, the, the girl, it was actually a girl, she was able to get in front of that guy. Right. That, no, she got blocked, but she was able to get in front of me. Right. So I immediately, as this was all playing out and as, as my row was coming, I stood up and I pulled the whole, I'm blocking for my whole row to get out now. So I jumped up in front of the other idiot and just stood there and waited for my family to get out of their row and the other two people in my row and just listened to the guy mumble behind me. Yeah. Guess where I met him? I met him at the baggage claim. And guess who got his bags before? Me. So I still beat the guy in life. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, Obi, elevators. Again, parent bad parenting. Who doesn't teach their kids? And I'm not I'm talking kids, but they're adults now. If you're a guy on an elevator, let the women off first. It's not that hard. Why? What do you mean why? It's called yeah. chivalry. You are in a fraternity and our whole motto is chivalry. What do you mean why? Your parents well, didn't teach you this? Uh, I didn't say whether I do it or not. I didn't say whether my parents taught it. I'm asking why. I'm asking why you feel that that's the chivalrous thing to do to let the women off first. What it's about the old person on the scooter? They No, you can't let them. They're going to run over the people that are standing behind them. You got to let them off last. They're dangerous. So definitely not the people on the scooter. You let the women and children off first. It's just a fact. This is what you're talking just like the same reason you hold the door for people. It's the right thing to do. Well, holding the door for people is, is a little bit is, is different. The elevator door, you could hold the elevator door for people. Well, you should hold the, you should hold so, the elevator door for so people, if you're, too. So if you're, if you're the person face right up against the door and there's women behind you, do you wait for those women to walk around you? Or do you get off? Like, Oh, well, well first of all, Obi, if you're talking a packed elevator and your face is and your nose is in the crack of the elevator door, and you're getting off at that, if you're getting off at that floor, 
absolutely you can get off you don't have to wait you're because you're blocking people that's the you got to get off you got to know the yeah i mean you can't be an idiot about this you got to get off likewise if there's people behind you and you're not getting off but you got your nose in the crack you step off the elevator to the side you hold the door you let anybody else coming off and then you get back on people oh. screw this up all the time obi Totally agree with that. And I would also go with the, you let people off the elevator before you get on the elevator. Oh, that's another one. Jesus Christ on that one. What, who the hell's, again, this is the, everyone's rushing to get someplace. The elevator's not going anywhere until the door closes. You got to let people off. I mean, I, oh my God. Don't even get me started on that one. And then the last one, getting on buses. I don't understand why. I know waiting in line, but you got these people who try to cut in between families that are getting on a bus. So if there's four people together, why would you think you could break that group up? What, like, what purpose does that serve? That, for you. Other than maybe you, uh, maybe people think that uh, your girls are old enough uh, to uh, ride their own bus uh, five minutes later. It's not even that the bus was full. It's not like, oh, I got to be the last person on. I'm not even talking about like leaving one person, which would really piss me off. I'm just talking about in general, there's 10 people getting on the bus and somebody's got to cut in front of the, a family of four. I don't get it. I, I don't have an answer for you. That that one I don't have. I'm sorry. What was it? What kind of bus was it? It was a Disney bus, damn it. A Disney I I just think people at Disney are angrier than they used to be. They're just selfish and idiot. They're selfish idiots and inconsiderate. That's what they are. I tell you, you're making you're not selling Disney on me. Well, don't even get me to start about the prices down there. All right, I'm, gonna, well, I'm not. We'll, we'll, we'll do another show on that one. I'm, I'm not going to get into Ed's a cranky old cheap man. We're just going to stay with cranky. Um, so Ed, I sent you this picture a few a few weeks back. Yeah, uh, yeah. So this, this is a picture sent to us. I don't, I don't know if he's a listener or not, uh, but he's a good friend. He knows about the podcast. He consistently likes when I post the podcast, and he listens into conversations with me and the guy who does listen to the podcast. So he obviously knows a lot of, enough about the podcast. So I will describe this picture. I'm going to try to put this picture as our alternate um, cover picture. The, our alternate drinking from the garden hose. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so what this picture is, it's a young man. Uh, listen, uh, that, that's that's probably insulting to young man. He's a kid. He's a kid. He's, he's not even a teenager yet. I know him. And his father is holding a, a spray water hose, and he's spraying it at his son. And his son, uh, this kid, has no idea how to drink the water from the hose. He's literally failing at drinking from the hose. Um, and what does this say about the youth of today that they physically can't even do it, let alone not be told not to do it? They can't do it. What does it say about our youth? Well, I think what's hilarious about the picture, and we will have to this will have to be the cover shot for, for this week's episode so people can see it. But what I think it goes into to, to really drink from a garden hose, you have to go all in and understand you're going to get a little wet. And it appears to me in this picture, and people will see this picture, that um, this young man is more afraid of getting wet than he is thirsty. I think you may be on to something, right? He's he's got his he, he's all hunched over. He's afraid to go. He's afraid to go for it because, like you said, I think you're right. He's afraid of the water. Uh, which I happen to know this is not a person who's afraid of the water. Know enough about it. Know that uh, water in general. Oh. Doesn't, he looks he looks afraid though. I mean his yeah, eyes no, he, are his eyes are closed. He doesn't want to get water in his eyes. No, he's afraid of this water. I mean in general, this is not a, is this not somebody who I, I mean the backs other thing out. he's doing wrong is you gotta have your mouth open. His mouth is barely open. I mean, he might be smiling. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, and it's gonna hit his chin. The water is gonna hit his chin if he goes any deeper because he's not looking, he's not prepared. Uh, he's in for a surprise. I also think the other fail flaw for this individual is you really shouldn't be six feet away from the hose when you're trying to drink from it. No, no. you got to get up in there and like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I also think another flaw is you really shouldn't drink from a hose somebody else is controlling. Like, 
you got to control the hose when you're drinking from the hose. I mean, yes. I mean, to that point, I think, I think this is, you know, he is a little bit set up for failure that, that the old, his old man is, is, is the one squeezing the hose control. But listen, I've, I've done it both ways in control and, and somebody else that uh, was controlled. Yeah. You get wet, sometimes sprayed in the ear a little bit, but, but you get your water. Yeah. But it does go better if you're in control of the hose. Yes. If you control the, your hose yourself, you, you get a lot more out of it. It's, a, it's yes. a cleaner process. I would agree with that. So we'll have to show everybody that uh, up on the website uh, when this episode drops. And I'd love to know if anybody still, well, so that does, let's, let's, let's just end it on this because we did get feedback on the last episode as well about the plastic utensils and plastic straws. And this Gen Zer basically said the reason we don't have plastic straws and plastic utensils anymore is everyone has plastic microplastics in their testicles now, uh, which that study did come out. And that does make me think that maybe paper straws don't suck after all. Paper straws don't suck. The charm is we suck. I'm Obi. That's Ed. Tune in next time. We'll still be drinking from the garden hose.